Hello, hello, everybody. It's Aggie. How are you? I think I might be just a few seconds early. I don't know if I have my comments on. And of course, I didn't grab my iPad to see if there are comments. Um, I mean, to have a second view of comments. Looks like somebody's here. So, welcome, welcome. We're going to be doing these wine shark, shark, is it charcuterie or sh charcuterie? <laughs> We're going to be doing these. Rima, okay, so can you hear me and everything? Am I, is it a go? Hey, Linda. So I made these for uh, downtown Kenosha's first wine walk. Somebody just let me know that you can hear me. And um, I don't know if your town has those. Okay, great. Hey, Michelle. Hey, everybody. Thank you for joining me. So yeah, I live in um, Kenosha, Wisconsin. It's, a, it's right on Lake Michigan. It's basically a suburb of Chicago. Good morning, Elizabeth, Sandy. And, um, you know, a lot of cities are struggling to come back and they decided to have this wine walk. Oh, sure, of course. Just, you know, happy to be here. <laughs> Love sharing. I, I, honest, you guys, I thought, is this even of value? I mean, it, you know, people can figure out how to do this, right? Do I even need to teach this? But, you know, Hey, hopefully I'll give you some tips and tricks and it and it won't feel like difficult for you, right? Sometimes we kind of don't even realize how much we know, I guess. I don't know. Anyway, so we're going to be making these today and uh, I hope you make them. I hope you make a bunch of them. I hope your town has a wine walk and you sell them there. I priced these pretty low probably, but I wanted to just kind of get my name out there. I priced them at uh, $23. Um, so the place where I got the boards from is Ikea, and you can kind of see that. You can see that uh, the logo's right there. I'm glad you're excited to see this. And um, they have some weird name for it, of course. And they stink, they smell, you know. They come with this very thick brochure talking about what they, how they've treated it. There must be safety issues or something. I don't know. I didn't even bother reading it. But anyway, <laughs> um, it's around, you know, six by 12, the size of these. And by the way, speaking of Ikea, I just wanna show you this container that I have these sitting in. Oh, it's a little heavy. So these, I, these containers are at Ikea. And I don't know if you have one near you, but these containers are the bomb. I love them, um, you know, for storing my art. And if you're selling your work, hopefully some of you guys are selling your work, um, I think they're a great way to transport your work to the shop um, and even use as a display. As you can see, I had them displayed in here. And of course, this is the lid. I mean, I'm not here to sell stuff for Ikea, but um, these are too tall. They're sticking out. But this lid makes it stackable. So it's very nice. And they have smaller sizes too. So, you know, if you haven't been to an Ikea lately, go check that out. These are awesome containers. So maybe what I'll do is I'll flip through some of these. And, you know, if you want to take some screenshots, get your camera ready. Yeah, we can see your comments, Laurel. Does the store you sell them at add a markup to the price? Um, no. <laughs> no, I, I basically am renting a baker's rack. Yeah, I rent a space. Mm -hmm. So anyway, um, and she takes 10% just for, you know, tax and bag, you know, the bags and things like that. So anyway, I'm going to run through these. If you want to take some screenshots uh, for ideas on colors, you're more than welcome to. Here's purple. I'm going to run through them now. Get your camera ready if you're going to do it. 
I'll try not to have myself in there. But anyway, there's purple. Um, and I'm going to talk about the beads and how you do all this stuff. This one is like greens and blues. This might not be easy to do. Here's one that's pinks and purples. This is kind of a beachy one with, um, now these have some matte uh, ones. Oh, thanks Elizabeth. These are some, what do they call? They like frosted. There's some frosted ones on here. Here's some green and yellow and clear. Oops, sorry. And you might be noticing that the boards are different colors, kind of, sort of. This one, I did not paint the board first. Thank you. Um, I, I guess I'd call this blue, you know, more blues. I'm running out of places to set these down. Just two more I'm going to show you. Okay, greens. Like an olive green. Thank you, Jane. And then there's um, red, I don't know, gold and red and orange and peach. I guess I'd call that, okay? So, hopefully that helps. You can order them online and I have to, I have to give, uh, I have to give kudos to my pal um, that, uh, you know, what happened was I was at Ikea with uh, my husband. It's, there's one in, I don't know, half an hour away from me near Milwaukee. And we don't like driving into Milwaukee too much. And um, we went up there and we went into the Ikea and they had a ton of these. I mean, honestly, they probably had, looked like thousands of them. And I thought about getting them, but I didn't. And then this wine walk came up and I thought, oh, and I was kind of thinking about doing, you know, a char charcuterie, I don't know if it's charcuterie or charcuterie. I was thinking about doing one of these boards, you know, I didn't know what I would do or anything. And I remembered these and the wine walk, I'm like, that's it, I'm gonna go up there and I'm gonna go buy some. And they were, they were gone. There were only four of them. I couldn't believe it. I, I talked to an employee and everything and apparently they weren't gonna be in for a month. So when they get them in at your Ikea, grab them. <laughs> so anyway, um, I, there were four of them. I bought those four and I thought, oh, I don't know what I'm going to do. And then I was talking to Laura York um, and, um, you know, just, just, you know, casually mentioned, yeah, they don't have them. I don't, I'm not sure what I'm going to do. She went and, and looked it up at her at the Tampa Ikea and she said, They've got 20 of them. And she said, how many do you want? And she got them for me. And she shipped them here and I paid her back and all that. So she was just, thank you, Laura. Thank, thank you once again. That was just so wonderful of her. <laughs> so, um, because it takes forever for them to ship it, apparently. She's ordered, she somehow knew that. I don't, I don't know how long it takes to get stuff from Ikea. You can order them. Um, well, you know what? I, I don't remember if there's more than one size. This is a, around six by 12 or five by, you know what I mean? It's, I guess I could get a, I, let me measure it real quick. Um, there are other boards besides this one. I just wanted something on the small size. So this is five and three quarters by 11 and a half. So it's essentially six by 12, rounded up to six by 12. All right, so that's what you need. You're gonna need one of these, and I forget the weird name they have for it. I think it begins with a P. You know how they name things strange at Ikea. You're gonna need um, some boards, obviously, and you're going to need these gems from uh, the craft stores, the glass gems. Okay, so. The glass gems come in two different sections. 
Yeah, good, I'm glad wheels are turning. Okay, so you know, they look like this. I think they're called mosaic accents when they're in the back section by the stained glass, and they might be called something else when they're in the floral section. <laughs> but they're glass gems. And, um, oh, these are called yellow. Isn't that funny? They're really not yellow, in my opinion. They're, they're green, they're olive green. But anyway, um, Hey Laura, I was just I was just telling everybody what a what a hero you were for me. Um, thank you once again. She, she you saved my butt because I it's funny because I had put a couple of them in the shop, and a lady wanted to pre-order six of them, and and you know that also compelled me to want to make about twenty or twenty five of them. And of course, when I went to the IKEA and they were all gone, I'm like, oh no, what am I gonna do? It is so funny. But anyway. Um, <clears throat> all right, so let me just talk about the boards first. Um, so can you see the shimmery metallic? You can kind of see that, right? So that's a metallic paint I painted on the board first. You don't have to do that. So here's one without. Here's one I left on Naturel. And you know, you can decide what you like better. There is a huge difference. Uh, Laurel's trying to find them on the website. Um, yeah, you're looking up. Oh, they're called breadboards. I think they might be called breadboards. I don't remember for sure. Oh, there, she's giving a leak. It's called a prop mayot chopping board. Thank you, Laura. You're so good. So look at the difference between the two, and you might decide to do something else with yours. That's totally, totally uh, your choice. This particular metallic that I used, I got from Target, Target. Um, have you ever looked at their little paints? I think it was this color. It's called, um, all right, I'll flip the camera. I hate seeing myself flipped, but... I'll flip the camera so you can read it. Yeah, Laura is fabulous. That was above and beyond that she did that for me. So this one was called Egg, Shimmer Egg. And it really is a beautiful color. It's a little almost on the purple side. It has a, I don't know, it has a cast of like a coolish purple to it. You can kind of see it more on this one. It almost looks just a little bit purplish. I don't know if you see that. Weird, right? Um, or another really good metallic paint that looks great under resin is, um, well, where'd it go? Hold on. Anita's Pearl Lace looks really, really good under resin. So, or you might have other choices that you use as well. All right, so all I did was um, paint that on there. And, you know, I'll show you the back. I did not worry about making the back perfect. I just didn't worry about it. It's a little bit on the messy side. I just painted the edges with a sponge. Let me show you what I use. I love these uh, makeup wedges from Dollar Tree. I'm going to flip the camera back because I can't stand how it, um, <laughs> I never get it. No, I didn't sand it. I didn't do anything to it except paint it, Rima. Thanks for asking that. Nothing. I didn't seal it. I just painted it with the metallic paint. The ones that um, you don't see any paint on, I didn't do anything to. They smelled so much. I kind of thought, wow, these are sealed already. I mean, they really do smell. <laughs> anyway, so I used a makeup wedge to um, quickly do the edges. You know, this is just a real quick way to do edges for canvases. And, uh, and then painted, you know, and you know how it is with metallic paints. You got to kind of paint it on quickly. And if you, uh, if you go back into it before it's dried, you make a mess. So don't overthink it. Just slap it on there and move on. Let them dry. While you're waiting for your boards to dry, you need to get your, your gems ready, your grapes. So, um, 
that's what I'm going to show you now. I'm going to talk about that for a bit here. And you know these gems come in all these different colors, right? I had a huge collection of them for, uh, I don't even want to tell you how many years. <laughs> but I had a lot. And I was looking for something to do with them. I still have a lot. Look at this. I still have this plus another jar. <laughs> Um, and I just, I wound up combining them all together. So, you know, some of, sometimes they're opaque, sometimes they're clear, sometimes they're frosted, right? And they come in different colors. I shared some photos yesterday of the colors that are readily available at my Hobby Lobby. Um, I think they sell these at Joann's and also Michael's, right, you guys? Uh, let me know where you've seen these and uh, what colors they have by you. And uh, they also sell uh, mixes of them. So remember to look on different shelves, especially when you're back by the stained glass section. There were some lower down that I almost missed showing you guys. So anyway, if you want to get real creative, even more creative, Dollar Tree has these too. Okay, awesome. See, I forgot about that. Thank you. <laughs> so if you want to get creative and color your own, you can use different things. You could use acrylic paint, you know, we're going to wind up gluing these to the board or in some cases not even gluing them, just placing them on there and then pouring the resin on top. It's up to you. It's just like any other, you know, piece of broken glass. You decide if you need to glue it or not. And um, I'll show you how I practiced positioning them. And uh, let's see, what else? So you can use acrylic paint. You can use... Um, alcohol inks. I'm going to show you alcohol inks. You can use, um, I also have some, you know, more slightly high-end uh, paints, you know, like these, how do you say it? Pebio, Pebio paints. Um, some, sometimes they're a, um, transparent. I don't know what the difference is between vitria and porcelain. Sorry, I'm backwards again. But, you know, these are expensive. You can get these at Dick Blick, but they're a little bit expensive. Um, and I'm gonna show you how I used those. So um, let's first, maybe what I'll do is um, kind of turn the camera down here and show you what I got. Okay, so, well, I don't know if I wanna do a side view here. Let's go this way. Sorry, a little bit of turbulence. <laughs> and what I'm gonna do is, uh, okay, gotta get the comments out of the way. Hello. And turn it this way. Okay, so now, okay, does that look all right, you guys? Okay, so um, these here's some alcohol inks that I have as a set, and um, I haven't asked Elizabeth this, but you know I can come back on one of these days and show you more stuff with alcohol inks if you'd like. I'd be happy to do that. I've got so much alcohol ink stuff. I'd, I'd be happy to do that. Just let me know. Um, I wanted to show you how I did some alcohol ink stuff. Here is. Um, I had these jars, and by the way, having these, if you're really into doing, you know, I think if you're really into doing glass pieces, glass and resin pieces, these jars are so handy to store all the different things we wind up using. And uh, I'm so glad I have these. So anyway, I wound up using these to store some of the beads that I colored. And I may have added more alcohol ink in this jar. I think I did, yeah. So this particular, these particular ones, um, they are a little bit dotty. Here, if I put them in here, you can see them, and I'll bring them real close. They're a little bit speckled. I don't mind that. Um, but what I did was I just literally poured a bunch of clear gems in this jar and then literally took the pinata... Baja Blue 
squirted it in there, put the lid on, and shook the jar. <laughs> that's how I that's how I colored these. Then I left the lid off and let them dry in there like that. I left them all in there, and I would occasionally come by and kind of move them around, just shake it so that if there were any globs anywhere that it would be distributed and help it dry. So, um, and honestly, I think it's like maybe, I think I started with five or six drops and I might have come back in and, and did it again. Keep in mind with alcohol inks, when they are re-wetted, the, um, they kind of form hard edges and they, it puddles and where there's an edge of a puddle, it forms a hard line. But, you know, uh, again, I don't mind that they're kind of speckled looking, you know. So if you don't like that look and you want a more flat look, then maybe try um, just painting on the back of, of your beads, of your gems. So here's one where I just took the metallic paint that I showed you a second ago, and I took a brush and painted it on the back, or a sponge, just, you know, boom, boom, boom. And when I turn it over, it, it has just a subtle little bit. It has just a subtle little bit of white to it. Otherwise, it was clear. It looked like this before. So, you know, and Laura uses nail polish. You know, that was a great tip. You can use alcohol ink, acrylic paint, metallic paint. Uh, who knows what else you might, maybe even paint pens. I don't know. <laughs> right? So, uh, okay. So that's that, right? Any questions on that? The other thing you can do if you don't like the idea of letting them dry in the jar, uh, I wanted to show you another thing from Dollar Tree. Have you guys noticed these mats? See this thing? It's a cutting mat. These are at Dollar Tree. These are great for uh, classes. I, I use these for my in-person alcohol ink classes so that because alcohol ink will stain and readily absorb into your nails, your skin, everything. So they wipe right off of this mat uh, when you wipe it with um, anything alcohol-based. Okay, Norma says, uh, I colored some glass recently with alcohol ink. When I poured resin over it, I got some running. Yes, that's a good point. Let's talk about that in a second. Got some running. Uh, some running of the alcohol ink into the resin, which I did not want. What could cause that? Um, you know, let's talk about that. I knew it wouldn't take long for somebody to ask about that. Hold on, hold on. So I haven't figured out 100% what makes that happen. Um, I suspect you let it dry thoroughly. Certainly, if you didn't let it dry, your alcohol ink needs to be really, really dry. The problem with alcohol ink is it can become uh, activated, reactivated if, you know, and then it moves, it's designed to move. So you can seal it, you know, and uh, you can Google any, if, if you don't remember this or, or whatever, you can Google this, uh, how to seal alcohol inks. And there's all kinds of videos on it and stuff like that. So what you could do is use this mat I was just talking about at Dollar Tree, this cutting mat, and put your beads down. Let me turn the camera back down. You, wanna, you don't have to look at me doing this. Hold on. Ah! You know, so let's say these are not sealed. Let's say I want to seal these. I guess what I would do is tape. Let's say I, 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 I'm going to put my gloves on because you want to have your gloves on. I colored these gems, I don't even know how long ago, probably when I did the blue corn a year ago. So these are completely dry. Um, you wanna have your gloves on, cause like I said, it's gonna stain. So what I, I think what I would do, if I really didn't wanna get any um, seepage, is I would, I would put them on a mat like this and I would spray them with the Kamar, Kamar varnish. That's gonna seal them. The 
the pain in the butt part is that then you need to flip them out, let that dry, flip them over and do the other side. I know it's a real pain. Maybe that's too much of a hassle, but that's the only thing I can think of. <laughs> the other thing you can do, so that was Kmart varnish. If you want to take a screenshot of this, wait, it's still backwards, isn't it? Hold on, hold on. Hold on. Oh, it's not letting me. Oh, for some reason, it's not letting me flip the camera. But anyway, uh, what they all say, these, these alcohol ink gurus all say to first seal it with Kmart varnish, and then if you really want to protect against harmful UV light rays, uh, use the UV resistant clear coating. That will help keep fadage from happening. It's not going to prevent it totally, but it, it will reduce it substantially. And then um, the third thing you would do is the resin. Now for, for people that are not into resin, what I have seen a lot of them do on the videos is they'll use a thing called triple thick glaze instead of resin. But hey, we love resin. We're resin people. So anyway, um, that's the only thing I know of to do. If, if, if any of you guys have any other ideas by chance, um, please, please share that because I just don't know what else to do. And, you know, really, um, I don't know why it happens because, you know, last time I was on here and we were talking about coloring gems and stuff like that. Art Resin actually pours resin right on alcohol inks in their demo video with their logo. So I don't know. I don't know why that happens sometimes. The only thing I can think of is that it gets reactivated somehow, you know. Obviously, you let it dry. We know not to pour it on. Uh, it's like you read my mind, but that's also why I like painting just the flat side. Yeah, exactly. It is. You should show us how to do that. Okay, wait, am I losing some comments here? Laurel wants me to show how to do what? Colors. Let me know what you, you uh, meant by that, Laura. Sorry, I missed that. So, Laurel, sorry. Okay, so, moving on, back to this. <laughs> um, okay, I'm going to turn the camera down. The corn. Oh, well... Let me ask Elizabeth if she wants me to do that at some point. I'd be happy to show that class. It's, 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 again, it's not really, not a big deal, but I'd be happy to show that. Anyway, okay. The other thing you might do is use one of these trays and just kind of, you, maybe you could even dip them into a bath of alcohol ink. I don't know, but um, who knows? Maybe that would work. I also wanted to point out that, um, you can use this sort of a thing to color. This is something you would use to paint alcohol ink onto things. Oh, okay. Laura's been using triple thick. I didn't know that. Oh, that's not good. <laughs> so anyway, you can, you can literally just take the alcohol ink, squirt it on here, and then dab it on any type of painting thing, anything you're painting on, like Yupo paper or whatever and it makes a beautiful texture. In fact, I'll just show you real quick what that looks like. Just put a couple dots on there, and um, let's just do it on this bead. See, so when I pressed that on there, it makes it like a spongy look, a dappled look, if you will. Here, I can do it on here. See how it just makes a dappled look? So that's that's a cool thing, right? <laughs> so anyway, um, does the brand of alcohol ink matter? I don't think so. I really don't. Um, this Pinata Starter Pack is wonderful. I really love their Baja Blue. I love their um, Senorita margarita pink or something I think it's called or here senorita magenta <laughs> fabulous color love it um so 
And then this just wipes right up with alcohol. So I, I don't, you know, like I say, I'll come back on and do alcohol in class if, 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 if Elizabeth wants me to. I hope I'm not putting her on the spot. Um, happy to do that. I don't want to turn this into an alcohol ink class. But, um, and the nice thing is, if you don't like it, you just wipe it right off. So that's kind of cool, right? All right. And then the other thing, just to mention, you want to be safe and, or cautious with um, alcohol, isopropyl alcohol. By the way, the 91% is much better to use than the regular. I didn't even know there was a 91% isopropyl alcohol before I started doing alcohol inks a few years ago. This one is more concentrated and it's much better to use. It's a little more expensive, harder to find. CVS usually has the best price. Um, but anyway, um, here is what I did so far. I did a, um, I did a, um, I did a bead with the, Actually, I don't remember if, I actually I used my interference, you guys remember my interference blue? Oh, my air is kicking on. Let me close this window. My, the air conditioning unit is right outside my studio window. <laughs> Sorry. Um, I used the interference blue by Golden on the back of this. And it, I don't know that it really, it doesn't really show that it's interference. Um, it just kind of shows as white, really. But I don't know, who knows, maybe that would show up. Um, interference just means it's two-tone. It looks like um, it has a, an abalone shell type of finish. And there are other interference colors by Golden. Um, so anyway, you can paint on the back of the bead you can, you know, pour it on and shake it to quickly color a bunch of beads. You can also use the Pebio paint. So here's one I did with the Pebio paint. This is a much larger um, gem, obviously. And um, I wanted to make it look like, a, a, you know, a two-tone grape. So I used a, like a red violet and a blue violet on there and it's pretty subtle but you could play around with this and who knows what you'd get yours to do. Um, I just did this real quick this morning and, and I don't know if you can tell, but it's very pretty in person, the depth of that. So, you know, here's what that would look like. And I just kind of quickly threw a bunch on a big tray like this. So this is the normal size gem, <laughs> you know, and these are the really extra big ones. So you could even do um, a version with really large ones like this if you wanted to. And this is one of those nice big boards from Hobby Lobby that I know Elizabeth loves. So, um, so that's an idea too. And when you're looking at the larger one like this, you can kind of see um, how you can, you know, get a few different colors in there. This happens to be, um, the Baja Blue, sorry, Baja Blue with the um, Pinata Rich Gold. Isn't that gorgeous what that did? Pinata Rich Gold. They do make a really wonderful gold. I really love their gold. Okay, here's a question. So you only painted the back. On, um, on this one, I only painted the back. Yes, Rima. Only the back. Here's what it looks like with a brush. I just went boom, 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 boom. And don't overthink it. Thank you, Michelle. Yeah. Easy peasy, right? So, um, okay. So what do you think? Enough about the gems? Probably, right? Or do you guys have any more questions about how to color your gems? we're going to move on to the next step if if not and oh i thought i would just show you the un the, the, the only kind of unfortunate thing maybe it's not that bad about buying the the um ranger 
they're Ranger and they're also, is it Tim Holtz? You've seen Tim Holtz, right? He does great videos. If you haven't, you can go look him up. But um, they come in sets of three. Oh good, I'm glad it's good info, Elizabeth. <laughs> um, they come in sets of three. And uh, when, I, you know, when I was doing my classes, I wanted to have a rainbow. And in order to get all these colors, I think I had to buy four different three set packs to get this rainbow of colors. Um, and I've got like 11 sets of these. But if you want to know what these colors are for a complete rainbow, just let me know. Or private message me, I'm happy to tell you. Um, I couldn't tell you which sets I bought. That would be uh, a little hard to, to do. But I don't know that anybody here wants to get into alcohol ink that much. Maybe you do. Or maybe you can just, you know, go look at their sets. I remember when I was buying them, it took a lot of research to figure all that out. They, they, need, a, they need a better way but um, they do come only in three set packs like this, or it makes more sense to buy the three set pack. They also come, uh, they also have additives with white, silver, and gold. Whereas Pinata has a starter pack. Yeah, you're right. You can, I'm, thanks for correcting me, Laura. You can buy individual bottles, but I think it makes a lot more sense to buy the sets from a price standpoint, but totally up to you guys. So here's, here's the, uh, like I've got a nice big bottle of rich gold. Love this stuff. It does separate. You have to really shake it before you use it. But man, this stuff is gorgeous. Let me, um, it's really gorgeous. Um, oh, this one's not even open. Anyway, um, The other thing you need is um, blending solution. You don't really have to have this. This is similar to using alcohol, but there's another wetting agent in it that basically allows, it, it extends your open time. And if you don't know what I mean by open time, that just means that it's what, how, however, how long it is wet and workable. That's your open time. So, um, I don't know if it's Jim Holtz or Tim Holtz, I'm sorry. The Holtz people, the Ranger people, have this alcohol blending solution for um, extending the open time of alcohol inks. All right. Um, so anyway, so I have this. It looks like we're good. Oh, and the other thing I wanted to mention, if you don't have, hey Kathy, if you don't have, it's Tim, thank you, Laura. Jars, if you don't have jars like this with a lid, um, dollar, good old Dollar Tree has these glass bowls with a uh, plastic lid that goes over here. It looks like this. So, or at least my Dollar Tree has it. So this is a great thing to um, color your gems in and then it, when you don't want to have it this color in it. And I, make, I made multiple colors. So when I was done doing one color, um, and they were completely dry. I would wipe it out with my 91% alcohol and have a totally clean bowl and do another batch of colors. Okay, so that's how you color your gems. And um, I'm gonna move on to the next step. Now, I mean, and you don't even have to color your gems. You might, you might just use the, the gems and the colors that that you have or that they came in, and that's totally fine. So for instance, um, this one, this one, I only used, I only used this. I only used, and they're called yellow, believe it or not. I only used this color of gems, and then I, I layered a second color. These are the bluish ones. You've, you've seen those, right, you guys? The really pale blue. Old food jars work, yes. Um, so here's what it looks like if you've got just really one color, maybe one or two colors. Or here's what it looks like, um, you know, with multiple colors. And as you'll see, 
a couple of these have those spots I was talking about, like right there, this one. See how it's spotty? I don't know, do you mind that? I don't mind it, personally. So, um, it, it's, it's up to you. I think it's nice to have different colors. And then I'm also gonna talk about the other types of things that I started throwing in there. <laughs> so, okay. Um, oh, and then let me, let me point out like with these, um, I had a lot of the matte glass ones and see how, see how um, these are matte? Like this one is a matte. Um, so you do know that anytime you've got something that's frosted like that, you don't wanna pour resin on top of it because it'll make it shiny. So for those, I glued them down. So it is a little bit more, you gotta think ahead a little bit more on using matte gems so that you don't pour resin on top of it. You can see here I made a mistake and accidentally, if I can, let's see if I can get it in there just right. I hate my nails, so let me use this. See this one right here? You can see where it's a matte gem, but I accidentally got a little bit of resin on it. It's kind of hard to see. I think you can see it though. Um, so that's a sweating grape. <laughs> that's a sweaty grape. <laughs> Um, but anyway, uh, I don't know. I, I kind of, I don't mind the look of that. I really don't. Oh, you can see it on this one too. You can see a sweaty grape. <laughs> so anyway, um, I'm going to, I'm going to talk about that in just a second. So enough about the gems, right? You, you might want a, a lot of different colors or you might want really just one color. It's totally up to you. Try different things, right? And these boards, how much were these boards again, Laura? I think they were only, uh, I think they were just under $5. They're cheap. I think they were just under $5. And what I did is I put a little um, sticker on the back. I ordered these from Zazzle. And then I put two little, um, these little things down there. And then on some of the boards, I to finish it off, I hot glued, I'll, I'll talk about this at the end. You can either have a hanger string like this or nothing. You don't even have to put this on. Or um, you could do this. This was a little bit more work. And later on, I got really tired of, make, of doing this and I stopped because that was hot glued on there. And that's that takes about 10 minutes for each one. And I got a little tired of <laughs> doing that. <laughs> but it, it does... It does add a nice look to it, I think, or maybe you like it without. All right, so let's move on. Um, so you're gonna have your board painted and ready to go. You're gonna have all your gems ready to go. Let me show you what I did then, if I can make some room. I'm just gonna make a little room here. How many of you guys are going to do this? Are you all going to do this? I hope you do. Okay, hopefully I made enough room here. <laughs> all right, I'm going to turn the camera down and just show you how I practiced my bunches. So I just, you know, when you first start doing this, you're like, okay, I don't even know how to make it look like a bunch of grapes. So. First, I just assemble a bunch of beads, okay, in different colors. And I grouped them together. I figured out what colors I liked together. And, um, you know, here's one where I thought, well, now you can buy these peach ones. They're really pretty. Um, and I think I had these orange ones were old. I don't think I colored these. And then this is a colored one. I don't know why I only have one. but. So first thing I did was put them, separate them into groups and you throw them in a cup if you want. And then I just took it to the board and arranged it. So you can see I made all these groupings like this of colors. I later on realized that I really like um, these lighter, clearer ones on top. I started layering them and I uh, really liked the look of that. Here's, here's a grouping 
where I've got matte blue. These are kind of hard to find anymore. I don't know if you can still find these. Um, this is even, you can buy them. These beads come in black and white, by the way. And then these are not always at Hobby Lobby, but they're a little smaller. I bought these about a year ago. Um, it's nice to have that different size. So hopefully you can find those as well. Marcia, is Marcia raising her hand with a question? <laughs> Maybe she's saying hi. <laughs> um, okay, so there's a grouping. And it's around 30 gems. Approximately 30, you know, 28 to 34, something like that. Here's another grouping. Just see what you like. See what colors you like to bring together. See what happens. Now, these pink ones I colored with alcohol ink. And here's another one that looks a lot like the one I already showed you. So I just made, I made groupings like that. Um, that's how I did it. You don't have to do it that way. I just wanted to get it, get it together and get it organized. You know, I was figuring out what I liked. I really like this, like for a beachy vibe. Oh, you're going to make one? Yay! All right, so... And then what you want to do, you could just kind of throw them all on there if you want. Turn them all right side down, flat side down, and just start assembling. What I usually do is look for a smaller one to put at the bottom, and then I just start arranging them. This one has a weird dot in it I don't like. So you might think about where your light source is if you want or not. It's totally up to you. Just start throwing them on there. Don't think about it too much. It's generally a triangle. That's all it is. It's just a simple triangle. And what you want to do is think about where your um, where your vine is and leaf is going to be. And I'm going to talk about that in just a second. So here's a simple, a really simple vine and leaf. And you can see the approximate position of where I have it. Um, Sometimes I went up a little higher. This one goes up a little bit higher into the handle, you know. This one really occupies a lot of space. It has leaves going on either side of the stalk. This one has the leaves only on one side, you know. I don't know what you like better. Um, This one, I really, I think I like the position of this. I mean, the stalk, the stem is pretty straight. It's got leaves on both sides and this, it really fills the whole space nicely. So that's all I'm trying to do. I'm trying to fill the whole space with, with these grapes and also have room for my stalk, my, my uh, stalk and my leaves. So, okay. So let's say I get this all on here like this, roughly, okay? Roughly in, in, in the space I want it to be at, right? Now I'm gonna add the vine and the leaf, right? So here is my tray for all that. And you know, we learned from Elizabeth, I think it's where I first saw that. I love, love, love these, um, what are these brownie the brownie tins from Dollar Tree so I just cut up leaves and I happened to find this really weird vase that had all these these colors really reminded me of I don't know if you can see it but it really reminded me of uh, grape leaves you know um, but it was very thin glass so I cut all these up and let's say that's what I'm gonna use. Usually what I'll do is first I'll put the, um, I'll put the stock in and that's just brown. I think this was just brown beer bottle glass that I just, you know, nipped into narrow sections. And, you know, sometimes you can just lay it down flat or um, put two pieces or whatever, you know, experiment with how you like that. 
Okay, so that would be my little stalk and then just put a couple leaves down. Usually what I'll do is make it into a, a couple of pieces, just kind of layered. I want it to be dimensional. You might not want to do that, but you know, you guys, you guys have done this sort of thing. Um, I really like the rippled glass, like a votive, to, um, to make a leaf, just cut it into like a little bit of a triangle shape. So something like that. Sometimes I'll have a bead under the leaf to make the leaf kind of stick up. You know, and of course you can use glue when you're arranging that or whatever you want to do. And um, you can decide if you want to have the grapes tuck right up under that or have a little space or whatever, however you want to do it. And so sometimes I would have the grapes going this way. Sometimes I have them going the other way, you know. That's, that's how you would arrange it, you know. Let's say you don't like that. You just want to do, you know, something like that. That's fine, too. Um, now, that was all a single layer. If you want to um, layer them on top of each other, that looks great. You can do that. I think that makes it even more interesting when it's dimensional. Of course, I need more beads. That looks too small now but you know, you can layer them on top of each other. And um, I don't think I have any more peach beads of it or else I would do that. Oh, here, here's some more. Here's some more peach beads. There we go. And it just, it adds a lot when you layer it like that, I think. Okay, so this leaf doesn't look too good like that. Let's do, let's do this. And grape leaves, you know, look at a reference picture of grape leaves. They're, they're kind of wide. That's what brings the sunshine into the plant to help it grow. So they're kind of wide leaves so have a little fun with that you can certainly have a leaf overlap the grapes too anyway all right so what I did since I was doing multiples is um, I would have it arranged on the board like that and when I'm ready to to do to actually you know put the resin on and all that good stuff. I would grab another board. I'd grab another board, get my cups out. Let's say I'm gonna resin this right now. I'm not gonna do it. I hope you don't mind. I'm actually not literally making any of these. I'm talking my way through the whole thing. I hope you don't mind that. So, you know, you get your, get your table ready. <laughs> yeah, um, you probably only need three of these cups. Make sure your table's level, all that fun stuff, right? You love the, the one big layered green, big, one big layered grape leaf. Yeah, could be one piece, sure. So then I have, I have this one here, and then I'm going to actually do it on this one. There might be some pieces that I glue down first because I know it's gonna shift, you know. Um, that's totally fine. So I'm basically taking it, let's say I decide I don't really like that, I'm just gonna do it this way, you know. And you could just take, take them off of here, like the, the, all the, the top layered ones, I take off, throw them to, on the side. Those are the ones I'm gonna layer on top. You know, and then just go ahead and Transfer them all on here. Oh, wait, 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 I got ahead of myself. Sorry, got way ahead of myself. The reason why I do it this way is because I resin this first. <laughs> Hello. So let's say this is a painted board. This is already painted, or I'm not gonna paint it. 
um, I like it natural, okay? So then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to um, pour some resin on here and spread it out with a spreader. Get the whole thing coated with resin, okay? So the whole thing has been resined. Now I'm gonna stick these on here. And that's why, yeah, Rima's as asking why do I transfer them from one board to another? because it's just a way to organize my colors and my layout and um, and that's all really, so that I see where to put it because the board is wet. I forgot to say that, Rima. The board, this is already wet with resin. I don't know, I would just rather have the, the board resined and then position them all on there. You can move them a little bit in the resin, it'll be fine. So, um, and, and if you want to do it a different way, that's totally fine, too. But that's what I did when I was doing 20 of them. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, eventually it's going to look like this, right? I've got all of them. i got the whole thing arranged, and they're sticking in the resin. And then I would add a little bit of resin on top. What I could do is put some resin and then place these on top so that they won't fall off, you know, the layered ones. Put some resin, put some resin, put it on top. And then I'm also going to grab my other um, accessory beads, okay? So let's talk about that a second. Let's chat about that. Um, you want to have some other things ready to grab. So, for instance, of course, we've got our, you know, vase filler glass from Michaels. This was blue. I don't know that the blue would look great with that. Maybe you've got clear. Of course, these bubbles you can use. That's what I use on here. The other thing you can use is, um, so here's some here's some clear ones that I used that looked good. And actually on this one I sprinkled the little vase filler on top. The other thing you can use is um, the little seed beads. So here's some where there are little purple seed beads sprinkled in throughout. Okay, so once you resin the board, you need to put the beads on pretty quickly. Well, yeah, with resin, you know, you've got a good half hour. It's it's pretty easy to do, especially if you've got if you've got it all laid out and pre-planned. It's pretty easy to do. So you can use um, like this is another kind of bead. I don't know if you can see that, um, but I'll show you in a second. Whatever little beads you've got, you can sprinkle them on here. Have that all ready to go. Um, here, I got a couple of really fun ones, this bead here. Um, and then I also have my hearts. This is a gold heart right there. Uh, you don't have to do that, I just like that. And then here, these some of these are beads, um, different kinds of beads. Here's one where the gem actually got tilted, and you know what, I don't mind it. It went askew, but it looks fine, you know? <laughs> so don't even worry if they get tilted. Can you see that, that it's tilted, this one? I don't know if you can tell. Um, Brandy, yeah, you can pour resin over the entire thing at the end unless you've got frosted beads that you don't want to have resin on. So you have to kind of plan that out. As I said earlier, if you want to keep them frosted, don't pour resin on top of those. Here's a really fun one. I went really crazy with this one, with the gold and everything. So um, let me show you, like, see here, this is a flat bead. Um, the gold hearts I got from Hobby Lobby and uh, when I was sharing pictures with you guys yesterday, um, they didn't have any. I don't know why, but um, hopefully they'll have them again, or maybe you can eat, they're, they're gold beads, they're chunky gold beads, that's all they are. So let me just show you, um, 
on a quick idea. Here is a bead set that, um, oh, I didn't realize what time it was. I really talked too much. <laughs> so here's what the bead set looks like. Here's what the bead set looks like. It's, it's by Bead Design Company. And you, if you want to organize them, they, they, it works great putting them in one of these from um, Dollar Tree. So I did that with that. And these beads, a few of these look great on there. And also, there are a couple of hearts in this set. Is it, oh, no, it's not. I, I'm sorry. I apologize. It wasn't a heart. It's an egg shape. Uh, the pink one, the pink set had hearts. So that's an idea there. Here's the flat beads. So here I have them all in a jar. This is what the set looks like. It's called Acrylic Stone Mix. This is great for flamingos and you know all kinds of things, but you can see it's just a flat, um, well, here's a purplish one. That wouldn't look really good with that color. Well, maybe it would. So these are just flat beads. And when you put them in with the purples, it just blends in, looks great, you know? Or, you know, don't be afraid to use it with the greens. Purple and green are like first cousins. They just love each other. <laughs> or even with the, the blue, you know? Looks good with that too. But it looks really, really good. These look really, really good with, with purple and blue. See that? Look how nice that looks. Goes really well with that. And you know, who knows? You might find other other flat beads and things that you can, you can use. Oops, don't drop them. So, okay, those are bead ideas. I don't know, I love these acrylic bead sets. Yeah, this set had hearts. See, here you go. The little heart in there. Isn't that cute? Let's see what she's saying. Purple and green are my, yeah. Sorry, I was late. That's okay, Brandy. Work meetings, aw, oh, the things we do for money, right? I'll rewatch from the beginning. <laughs> oh, oh, if you have any questions, Brandy, that's okay. Okay, so yeah, hearts. There's all kinds of interesting little shapes. Yeah, I I wish they had the, uh, the gold. Um, Gold and silver hearts. I don't know why I didn't have that. Okay, so then here's um, just a few other ideas. Let me pull this over. So like this was this was a um, a blue blue bead mix. You know, I don't really like any of these for what we're doing, but I pulled these out of this set. These would look great, you know, with, even with this, they would look good, I think. Um, but I really think they would look good, you know, with this, you know. See, when you throw the, them, those on top, they look nice. And you can turn it so that the hole isn't showing, you know, when you arrange it on your board. Okay, so... And what's nice about this is that it's also a slightly different size. So I think it adds a lot to throw some beads in there. Because again, variation. We want different sized things and we want different colors and textures and all that good stuff. Here's the hearts. They're just really chunky beads. Um, oh yeah, and you can, that's, oh, that's a great point, Laura. You can make your own resin hearts and resin gems too. I saw at Hobby Lobby that they have the molds to make gems just about the same size. Here's another, this is a great set, the bubblegum bead mix. This is a great, you could see that I used this. Um, these were some of the ones that I used. Um, th this I got years ago. Um, these are from the jewelry section at, I think, Michael's. 
and I just, you know, I had them a long time and decided to throw them in um, since I had them. So, um, I think that's, I think that's everything I wanted to say. Oh, and then there's also these seed beads, you know, they come in every possible color and they come, you know, like here's some that are, you know, flat. These look really pretty. They catch the light differently than the round ones. Um, sometimes these seed beads are glass, so you kind of see through them. And um, this mix looks really great. This is called Glass Seed Beads Tortoise Rainbow. These look really good with the, for, the, for the wine grapes because there's green, purple, and gold um, reflections in here. So, so, you know, any of these will work really great. Um, I think that's it, you guys. <laughs> Easy peasy, right? So you resin twice. No, I don't. I it's it's all in one setting when I do these. I resin the board first, throw the beads on in, into a grape arrangement, um, and then I put my accoutrements on, my additional little beads and decorations, and then I drizzle uh, over the top. Does that make sense, I hope? The only time I don't drizzle over the top is if I have these, um, the matte beads, the matte ones. I just don't drizzle over those. And I really do like adding the little bit of um, glittery stuff. Oh, you're so welcome. Do I remove bubbles? Oh yeah, just like any other project, of course, yes. Good question though, Rima. Sorry, I forgot to say that. So yeah, after you've done your resin, you would hit it with your heat gun or your little flame torch or whatever, whatever tool you use. <laughs> They're easy. They're so easy. So um, let me just talk about the um, hanger board really, really quick, the hanger part. So, oh, I forgot to I forgot to get my rope. So basically it was a rope twine. I got this, this was parchment colored rope twine that I got at, no, Rima, don't ever say that. You didn't ask too many questions. No, 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 please don't say that. Um, okay, so this is, it's actually a pearl, like, yeah, yeah, you wanna batch them. It's like a shiny um, pearl, rope twine it's near the same section as the the pony beads and all that stuff so figure out the length that you want i usually wrapped it around about 10 or 11 times first i cut the the hanger part and tied the knot and glued it just the knot glued the knot in first picture this is not here yet then i took one long piece of this twine and starting on the back, starting on the back, I would put a little bit of hot glue and um, start it off the right side, wrap it around. I only put the hot glue on the back and you can see it's kind of bunched up there. And I would squirt a little hot glue on the board and then quickly put the twine down in it without burning my fingers off. So um, that's how I did it anyway. You can see I didn't do it perfect. This little frayed edge shows. So that's it, you guys. That's it, that's it. Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> and if you have any further questions or stuff, just DM me. So that's it, I'm gonna let you go. Have a great week and um, love you guys. Bye. Oh, you know what I should tell you? If you, have, if you need to email me, it's agnesfriedlander at gmail.com or my uh, Facebook page is Artist Heart Studio on Facebook. If you, if you haven't liked and followed my stuff over there, you can. And um, I'm also on Instagram as Agnes Friedlander Art Studio if you wanna follow me there. I do a lot of stuff in my stories. <laughs> 
Thanks, you guys. Bye.